Hello everybody and welcome to Project Trade. This is the Trading Highlight Show. All the moments that matter for my testing of trading strategies. Today we're on a technical trading strategy and we are reversing our relatively simple strategy. Correct Amundo. We had some pretty tragic results trading that strategy and so now we're going to flip the whole thing on its head and see where that gets us. Profitability, that's where it's going to get us. Clearly both genius and ingenious. Actions speak louder than words so, so let me take the action of talking everybody through the strategy. Firstly, if you do want to check out the relatively simple strategy and how that went it will be linked in the video description but we're going to use two indicators to get us to where we need to be the 80 period simple moving average will be one of them if you're unfamiliar with the simple moving average then welcome to the world of trading it adds together the individual prices from each of the periods that it's looking back at for us that's 80 and then divides that total by the number of periods for us that's 80 it will plot that data point on your price chart and connect it via line with the previous data point on the chart pretty simple simple methodology if you ask me i just get why they call it that smart and as the strategy name suggests in the form of a double entendre our second indicator will be the relative strength index the single line range bound oscillator which has a maximum reading of 100 and a minimum reading of zero it's trying to measure out price momentum with 100 being the most upward momentum and zero being the most downward momentum we're using the default period input from wells wilder which is 14 periods he liked to set the levels of the oscillator at 70 and 30 but we've set the levels in our example as what we're going to be using when we trade which are the 60 and 40 levels those are just the basics for our entry indicators we have made videos for each of them linked in the description if you want any more but what is going to be the entry criteria that actually gets us into the trades since we're in reverse gear when price is above the 80 period moving average we're only going to take sell signals then when price is below the moving average it'll be just the buy signals for us for our relative strength index it's more of the traditional signal for the indicator that we'll be using but the levels as you saw in our example are going to be tighter to the center line when the rsi value crosses and closes above the 60 value then we'll take a sell trade or when it crosses and closes below a reading of 40 it will be a buy trade entry this is close to what wilder intended to use the indicator for we're essentially gunning for those reversals here's an example of a trade entry that we take in this one we can see price moves above the moving average putting us up for sell trades and when the rsi shifts above 60 we would enter a sell trade now you might look at the chart and think out loud that this chart is clearly showing an upward trend and you're right but this was the example that we cherry picked out for the non-reversed relatively simple strategy and we saw what actually happened in that strategy with the vast majority of trades we took forward testing we didn't really see any moves at all that looked like this but just on the outside chance that we do come up against a move we'll need to manage our money somehow so just like in the relatively simple strategy we'll take some help from the accelerator oscillator it's a zero line crossover here histogram and it's calculated by taking the awesome oscillator indicator reading and subtracting from it a five period simple moving average of the awesome oscillator now the awesome oscillator is calculated by taking a five period simple moving average and subtracting from that a 34 period simple moving average sounds complicated there is no more time to explain it here the video is in the description if that's what you're after but for our intentions and purposes we will exit our trade if the accelerator oscillator crosses zero against us for example there's a very high chance that when we enter a sell trade the accelerator oscillator will have a reading above zero as price will be above the moving average and the rsi above 60 so we will exit the trade when the accelerator oscillator closes beneath zero if we're in a buy trade then we'll exit when the accelerator oscillator closes above zero we won't use the simple moving average or relative strength index for any exit signals though do bear that in mind they are strictly entry indicators for us we'll rock a take profit level as well no stop loss though remember it's reverse of the relatively simple strategy which used a stop loss level but no take profit level so the reverse will naturally use a take profit but not a stop loss when we're in a sell trade the take profit level will be at the lowest low in price from the last 14 periods and for a buy trade we'll switch that around and say that the take profit level will be at the highest high in price of the last 14 periods and we'll also measure our trade volume by saying that we have a two percent capital reward to wherever that take profit level is upside cap at two percent downside no cap 
crazy but true that'll keep our money managed and we'll stick with the 15 minute time frame that we used in the relatively simple strategy so that we can keep that consistent and we'll use the same three currency pairs as well those are the new zealand dollar us dollar pair the great british pound canadian dollar pair and the euro australian dollar pair there won't be anything to reverse when it comes to our journaling though but we will maintain a record of our trades to make sure that we have some glory to bask in when all is said and done let's get into the platform and make some trades here we are on the charts it's about 20 to 11 in the morning and we are broadcasting live from the ivory tower our three trading charts pulled up on the left we've got the new zealand dollar us dollar in the middle the pound canadian dollar and over on the right the euro australian all of them with their indicators on so we've got the 80 period moving average method simple applied to the closer price in a style of dark orchid and the relative strength index at the bottom let's take a look at that one the level set at 60 and 40 and it is 14 periods once again applied to the close this time in a style of red what is going on on those charts great british pound seeing some strength come back into it not as much as the euro australian dollar has the last couple though and it's getting very close to a signal so price above the moving average that means we are looking for sell trades only and if that rsi finishes above 60 in a couple minutes we'll be taking a sell trade we will delve into the economic calendar but first let's just wait two minutes see if we get this signal because it's very possible if we see the push just about 30 seconds to go before the close of the candle not getting the signal at the moment but let's just measure out where we're going to be from the lowest low of the last 14 periods might still come that'll be down here so we are looking at around about 40 pips here comes the close doesn't happen don't get the signal might get it this period but that's another 15 minutes so for now let's check out our economic calendar see if there's any big events for the day and it is a quiet day 150 we did have the bank of japan's summary of opinions published 10 days after they announced monetary policy or interest rate decisions explain yourselves and that was it for the asia session so far this morning in europe swiss unemployment rate and they hit the forecast so nothing too interesting there better than the previous so the actual in the forecast 2.7 percent against the 2.8 percent previous strong for them again it's a good unemployment rate we can see the non-seasonally adjusted one doesn't quite make the forecast but it's a 2.5 against a 2.4 forecast with a 2.6 previous so still a bit of an improvement for them even if they miss the forecast ever so slightly and then no events until 1 30 where we do get the weekly brazilian central bank focus market report which will have absolutely no impact on us whatsoever and then no numbers at all throughout the day plenty of speeches from the ecb and the fed so we've got ECB Executive Board Member Lane making speeches at 10 past 3 and 4 o'clock. Fed Vice Chairman Clarida is also 4 o'clock. Fed Chair Jerome Powell, 5.30. That could have an impact. He is the one to watch. And you've also got from the Federal Open Market Committee Member Williams making a speech at 5 to 6. Fed Governor Bowman at 7 o'clock. And then 8 o'clock, Bundesbank Executive Board Member Boltz. Loads of speeches. Obviously, j Powell the most likely to have an impact. But you never know if one of them slips up and says something they shouldn't. Their speech editor slept in for the weekend. Just assumes that the speech is fine when actually they're dropping bombs. Yeah, we'll see. Obviously, we're trading the US dollar and the euro. So if there is any instant impact, we should see that feed through. And that's it. 11.45 p.m. we do have from New Zealand electronic card retail sales month on month, year on year. But at that time, it's effectively tomorrow. Should be interesting though, the month on month forecast at negative 8.5 and the year on year forecast at positive 8.7. See if that works out. Let's get back on the charts. And again, it's the Euro Australian dollar. It's pushing green again. So we can see the RSI above 60. Just under 10 minutes and we'll check in on the close. 25 seconds to go until the close of the candle. Doesn't look like we're going to get the Euro Aussie dollar signal. We see the RSI now hovering above and below 57. As the candle goes red, our closest eye was on the pound Canadian. RSI up at 59, it could push there, still could. Doesn't quite get there. Wow, that was close. Now it's above 60. But if we look at this, 59.88 was the final reading. Last one to watch. If we see a green candle here, in fact, all of these charts, if we see the New Zealand dollar, US dollar as well, RSI around 58 there. They're all threatening a sell trade from these green candles pushing into overbought. Some good trade potential here. 30 seconds before the close of this candle does look like we could be getting two signals let's have a look at the risk new zealand dollar us dollar on the left 
Going to measure that out for 21 pips to the take profit. And the pound Canadian, again, at the lowest low of the last 14 periods. And we're looking at 47 pips for that one. So here we are for the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. We are going to round up, but you can see our risk calculated on the screen. And we'll sell the market. And we want to get in on the pound CAD quickly too, as we do see that dropping. And so once again, you can see our risk calculated on screen. This time, 0.39. Now we're in a couple of trades, we'll need our exit indicator, the accelerator oscillator for the New Zealand dollar, US dollar in a bit of an annoying situation where the accelerator oscillator is still below zero at the moment. This momentum hasn't kicked in for it, hasn't taken it across the zero line. Could be closing this one out if it does finish beneath zero. The Great British Pound Canadian dollar, this is more of what we expect to see with the accelerator oscillator. You can see there over the last three green periods, that absolutely has kicked in and it pushed the accelerator oscillator over a long time ago. So once this one closes beneath zero, that's when we'll be exiting the trade. Unless, of course, either of these are able to take our profit. You can set out New Zealand dollar, US dollar at 210 points. There it is, right towards the lowest low. And same for the pound caddy. Let's go for that take profit, 470. Everything done to the opposite of the relatively simple strategy. We didn't have take profits on those trades, so when we reverse it, we don't have stop loss on these. We are fully reliant on the accelerator oscillator or the take profit level to get us there. Let's hope none of these trades run really far against us. But we saw how the relatively simple strategy performed and it wasn't good. Hence why we can hang our hopes on the potential of reversing it for some profits. We are going to be closing off the New Zealand dollar, US dollar trade in just a few seconds. Looks like it's going to be for a small loss, but it could take one last leap into profit, maybe. Let's close it off now as the candle rolls over. It's in a weird situation where the accelerator oscillator hasn't quite caught up. You can see now where it does flip over. But if you had a rule that said, hey, the accelerator oscillator is also an entry filter on my trade, and I need it to be above zero for the sell signal, that would make sense. But we didn't put it as an entry indicator. We were in profit with it for about a minute or so, but it dropped out of that. Pretty close to our entry price, not too worried about that loss, as long as they don't start piling up like that. Meanwhile, our pound CAD is looking quite nice. Accelerator oscillator has still been rising, but hopefully this is a reversal and not a retracement of another move like this. At the moment, just over $50 up on that one. Quarter past 12, and on the pound Canadian dollar, we do see the accelerator oscillator flip now. It is a very mild flip at the moment, so if a strong green candle comes, it could stop us from closing. But if it finished exactly where it is right now, we'd make $60 profit from it. Let's just hope we don't get that one big green then. And over on the right, the Euro Australian dollar. Would have been really nice to see the RSI get over 60. That's at 59.4 up there. If we'd had a bit of a green candle, could have been on this sell-off. Still though, we'll wait for the proper signal to come. For now, we're looking at half past 12. Hopefully we can get this pound Canadian dollar trade closed off for some decent profit. Five seconds until the close, it does seem like we are going to be able to shut this trade down as it rolls over. We get the close of the accelerator oscillator, there you see it appear. So we shut that one down and turned out pretty good, $40.72. Pretty happy with a win like that though. Does put us about $30 up for the day. Always nice to see. And now for future signals. Well, the New Zealand dollar, US dollar is closest. RSI lurking around that 60 level. If it gets up, could see a sell signal right in this same sort of area. Had we allowed this previous trade to run through, looks like so it would have ended up closing on the return of this candle right here. So, hmm, might have been better, but there's still a spread, so I don't really think there would have been any money to be made. We'll watch and see if that overbought signal comes there, though. As of right now, it will be a sell trade. With the RSI hovering around 63, it does look so we are going to get the signal. So let's measure our risk on the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. 26 pips, more than last time. So you can see what that means for our risk as we do get the signal from the close. So it's going to be 0.57 for a sell trade, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. And then we can marry up that take profit level at 260 points right towards the bottom there. I'm not sure how this one's going to go. We have seen a higher low come in this, so it wouldn't be too surprising if a retracement is on the move. And it is one again where the accelerator oscillator giving us some problems still below zero itself at the moment. So it could just be a bit of a coin flip on the direction that this goes this period. 
does look like we are going to be closing this trade off. Five seconds time, the accelerator oscillator closing below zero, staying closed below zero at least, and it's going to be a win for us as we shut that off for $14.82. The previous loss on that chart was $9.10. So we do make that money back plus another $5.72 as we see price come green on the chart. And if this candle finishes green like that, we can see the RSI is 60.77 right now. I mean, just before it closed at 59.14. So technically that would be a re-entry signal with the RSI in above 60. So we will have to watch for signal number three on that chart. Could come pretty quickly. But for now at least, we can be pleased that we got a win out of that trade. Let's keep it going in that direction. Well, we are going to get the sell signal again on the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, RSI 61.33. Not going as high as we would have liked it to. We're going to call that 26 pips again. So it's the same volume. Once more, we can sell it off. And so look at how similar this entry position is. Let's have a look at the prices. 71516 for the last trade. 71513 for this one. And of course, we can once again set that take profit level. Let's pull up our accelerator oscillator. This time, the accelerator oscillator is above zero. That could be good, it could be bad. It means we get to give it a full chance. It was a bit of a weak crossover, so we could see it return with one strong red candle. But hopefully we do get the chance to get two or three. Otherwise, this could be the start of the accelerator oscillator move. We don't want to see that push on with too much green, because that means that price will be getting us down. It's been an interesting one. Good money to be made, or bad money to be lost. Let's find out. About 40 minutes into our trade, not looking good at the moment. We've gone to around about $32 down now. It's getting away from us. It looks like it does want to actually go on a run instead of reverse. And you can see it push there, $35 down. Meanwhile, the middle chart, the Great British Pound Canadian, what a push on this candle. And it has knocked the RSI above 60, almost at 62. So we're going to be measuring out our risk. This is the 14th candle here. So we do get quite a low for it. Otherwise, it would have been up here. Have a look what that gives us. That is around about 49 pips that we're going to go for. So we are going to get a sell trade. This is pushing hard, so it could easily push for another period. Not what we want to see, but there's always the chance that it is overbought. So let's sell off the market and we'll sell our take profit. 490 points. It's gone to our favor at the second. There we go. The take profit set. This is going to be a bit of a wild one. Honestly, it could go either way. Let's have a look at the accelerator oscillator. And that is above zero, so we're going to have to wait for the reverse. Pretty volatile out there. Just gone half past two, and we are getting crushed out there at the moment on both of our trades. We saw green candles come on the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and the pound Canadian. Particularly the pound Canadian, it was looking like it could have been profitable for us. And I still could, but that was a really big push for the buyers. On the New Zealand dollar, US on the left, the accelerator also does continue towards zero, but... Barely a difference between the last two histogram bars. Again, if that last candle, instead of being a green, had been a red, would have pushed the accelerator across zero and we'd be looking at a bit of profit. At the moment, we need a big move on both these charts to get us going again. And our trades continue to get punished here. Green candles come on both these charts, pushing to new highs of the day, and they look like they're going to keep on going. We are currently $170 down from these two trades just after quarter past three, and we continue to get obliterated by these trades. Almost $250 down between the pair, particularly the pound Canadian dollar, just looks like it wants to keep on running. Both these charts, though, and no sign whatsoever of the accelerator oscillator turning back and getting beneath the zero line. 30 seconds until four o'clock, and right at the end of this period, the euro Australian dollar over on the right is sneaking in with a signal. It's getting almost beneath 39. Can it hold that a pullback will take it above 40 again? We have calculated our risk as it does look like it's going to hold. So we'll be getting in with 0.67 lots. This one's going to be a buy signal. It does hold out. And there we go. We buy in. Yeah, spread's not the best. 30 pips, 300 points for the take profit. You can see that's up towards, it's meant to be the tip around here. And price has been coming down. This is a support level by the look of it. And with 30 seconds until we get to half past four, the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, the accelerator oscillator has gone below zero only by a touch, but that's enough that we will be able to close out the trade at 15 seconds. It is going to be quite a hefty loss for us unless we see a miracle in the next five seconds. Here it comes and we do close it down. 
but I want to focus in on it just for a minute because this is a near perfect example of how the relatively simple strategy is meant to work. When we were trading the relatively simple strategy, we didn't get any trades in the three days at all that looked like this, but this is how they were meant to look. So if you haven't seen the video on the relatively simple strategy, don't worry, don't bother, because this is a much better example than anything you're gonna see over there. So this would be a buy trade here, not a sell trade. You'd buy in when the RSI closed above 60, and then you catch all of that first move. You get all the way up there, and then hopefully price just ranges around until eventually the accelerator oscillator just drifts across that zero line, giving you the signal to close it down. And even better, it peaks off with a green candle. A lot of the time we were finding when we traded the relatively simple strategy, our trades, they were doing this, and then right before the end, they wouldn't retrace, they'd reverse, and we'd see a couple big drops. Obviously in this strategy, we could have done with that, but really happy to be able to show this trade and say, look, this is how the relatively simple strategy is meant to work. Because I did feel a little bit foolish when we were trading that strategy that we didn't get any of these trades. And you kind of have to turn around and say, well, it looked like it worked in back testing, but nobody believes you when you're live forward testing. So here it is. The proof is in the pudding. We did lose $122.55. If it had been the relatively simple strategy, obviously we wouldn't have uh, made as much as we lost because the spreads are so involved. But it would probably be around about $100. By far the biggest win we would have got on that strategy. But let's have a look at those other charts. Pound Canadian dollar looks like it might be another good example as well. Because we see that accelerator oscillator drifting towards the zero line. But no strong reversal coming just yet. $180 down on that trade. And finally our Euro Australian dollar. We got in with the buy trade at 4 o'clock. Since then two big red periods. Now hoping to get some reversal on that. But we've got a long way to go if we want to see any profit. This is looking like it could be a loser as well. And as we roll into half past five, our Euro Australian dollar trade over here, it's been an hour since the update. We've actually had four green candles since then. It looked like it was going to be pretty bleak. That low down there, we were getting deep into losses, but the return has come. Currently in profit, and we see the accelerator oscillator does flip zero. That means 15 minutes time. We could be closing down this trade, hopefully with a bit of profit. Maybe it can push even higher. Great British pound, Canadian dollar. It is bad news though. You can see on the chart since the last day, every single candle has continued to run green. And that trade alone now is $260 down. It's definitely making a case for a stop loss in there somewhere. All right, it does seem like we are going to be able to take some profits from closing this Euro Australian dollar trade out. There it goes. That was $33.80. Pretty near perfect. Would have been good to get in at the end of this candle maybe. 39.57 was the RSI reading when we got in. The next one down at 36.94. That would have been even more profits. Happy we could snap some back though, get a winning trade going again. Puts us about $45 down on top of the Great British Pound Canadian dollar trade, which is still going at about $280 down. Not so good. Hasn't been too much impact throughout the afternoon from any of the speeches either. Even Jerome Powell at half five. Not got anything interesting to say. And we're not going to take any more entries. We are just going to wait until the end of our Great British Pound Canadian dollar trade. Whenever that may be. How long have we been in it? Uh, almost four hours now. Our longest winning trade when we were on the relatively simple strategy was two and a half hours. This one has absolutely blown the performance of those trades out of the water. Only really had that one consolidation period. That brought the accelerator down and it looked like we could get the crossover. Which now does seem like it would have been pretty nice for our results. But it's pushed again and now who knows when it will cross. Quarter past six is about to hit us. And we are going to be able to close the Great British Pound Canadian dollar trade at last. And the previous two candles, they've done us a favor as well. Really did put some red in. At the peak, it was around about $280 down for that trade. But it finishes $186.04 down. Certainly not a good trade. But at least we did have some winning trades today. It wasn't all bad. It was just the New Zealand dollar and the Great British Pound both decided to trend. An experience that we're not really used to seeing, but it did happen. And at the very least, I do feel quite vindicated about the relatively simple strategy because you can see exactly how the trend is meant to work. This pound Canadian did come off a bit more than you'd want it to right at the end, but it was such a powerful run-up. There was still a lot of profits to be had before the accelerator oscillator turned. 
that on top of the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, which just gave a prime example. Look how close to the top this got you out. There was only about another three or four pips in it. So if you were wanting to see in those videos how the relatively simple strategy was meant to work, now you've seen it. We will be back again for more reverse relatively simple strategy. But first, let's check out these trades over in the journal. Well, that's our journal. Six trades in the day, three gains, three losses. Doesn't sound too bad, but the losses, two of them at least, were really heavy losses. And we saw exactly how they played out. But at least we did see how we can get winning trades. So if we can avoid the trends, or at least we can get some retracement in the trends. I mean, that pound Canadian trade really went for it. Didn't stop at all. Had that one consolidation period, and that was it wasn't enough to drag the accelerator across so we were stuck in no man's land not very good at all but it does give us some hope that we could come back and get some bigger wins in these ones as well here's a quick side by side comparison with the first day of the relatively simple strategy we also had six trades that's the last one of the day there the losses only came to about $200 less 57.76 for the win but it was quite a loss for the reverse strategy going even worse doesn't bode well However, if we see day two of the relatively simple strategy, that went really deep. We lost about $500 that day. So if we reverse those signals, what do we expect? We expect to take home $500 tomorrow. We'll see if that happens.